Hello everyone, welcome to American Life 365. Harris Walls would make America a socialist country. Let's take a look at a video circulating on social media of Tim Walls calling for one-man socialism at a fundraiser for Harris's white brothers. But we can get out there, reach out, make the case. And for one thing, don't ever, don't ever shy away from our progressive values. One person's socialism is another person's neighborliness. He believed socialism was a good neighbor policy, and that's how he described it. Not only did Tim Walls embrace this ideology, he experimented with it in Minnesota. As Minnesota governor, Tim Walls signed a bill in March 2023 to provide free school meals, including breakfast and lunch, to all students attending public or private schools, regardless of their family what is the income. Providing free meals to the more than 600,000 Minnesota students to whom the bill applies would cost about $200 million annually. So Minnesota must issue government bonds to pay the bills that all Minnesota taxpayers must pay. Tim Walls also supports making Minnesota a sanctuary state for illegal immigrants and signed a bill that would allow illegal immigrants to obtain driver's licenses. As governor, he even told CNN that he would invest in ladders to help migrants climb the wall along the U.S.-Mexico border. Tim Walls has taken guns out of the hands of the public and is truly an advocate for stricter gun control measures. The measures include requiring background checks for private transfers of handguns and semi-automatic weapons. Allows authorities to request an extreme risk protection order to temporarily remove firearms from individuals the government deems to pose an imminent threat to themselves or others. Walls's stance on gun control is a lot like California salami slicing to take away people's guns. This violates the Second Amendment. Tim Walls is known for his progressive stances, advocating for green energy and defunding the police in addition to issues like universal free school meals and gun control. He also stressed the importance of not shying away from progressive values, equating them with neighborliness and community support. Walls is one of the far-left Democrats in the party, perhaps further left than Harris. Socialism doesn't care about your neighbor, it cares about the power of the government to control the people. Socialism is taking away people's property and taking away their freedom. Looking back at human history, is there no example of a truly effective socialist system? No. Over the past 100 years, there have been more than 20 attempts to build a socialist society. It has served in the Soviet Union, Yugoslavia, Eastern European countries, North Korea, China and dozens of Asian, African and Latin American countries all people with different cultures and histories. But they share a common outlook, people whose property and freedoms are being stripped away by the governments of these countries. All of these socialist experiments failed miserably and ended in varying degrees of disaster. Instead of bringing prosperity and abundance to everyone, they brought poverty. How does an idea that has failed so many times, in so many countries, different cultures, and so many different versions, remain so popular. Because socialism is easy for people to follow. Over the past five years or so, the Democratic Socialists of America, DSA, has welcomed an influx of 78,000 new members, mostly young people. Socialism has become a youth movement. Socialism has become a new fashion and a new trend. Any new socialist experiment, in its early stages, will be warmly welcomed by the broad masses of intellectuals, especially school teachers. The most recent example is Venezuela, which just a few years ago was hailed by intellectuals and left-wing politicians as a model of 21st century socialism. Bernie Sanders is a prominent left-wing intellectual who has described himself as a democratic socialist for decades. Bernie Sanders traveled to Nicaragua to celebrate the sixth anniversary of that country's socialist revolution, the Soviet-backed government suspended citizens' civil liberties, including the rights to free speech, free assembly, and to strike. Princeton University professor Cornell West declared, I love that Hugo Chavez made poverty a priority. I want America to prioritize poverty. This is poverty eradication, and all fashionable intellectuals are on board. But the reality is that more and more people are living in poverty.
Now that the failures of the socialist experiments in the Soviet Union, China, Venezuela, Cuba, and North Korea were well known, even mass murderers like Joseph Stalin and Mao Zedong received enthusiastic praise from the intellectuals of the day. How common is this admiration for dictators such as Mao Zedong and Stalin among intellectuals? In fact, thousands of Westerners traveled to these places and returned filled with praise. You can easily find hundreds of quotes from Western intellectuals praising Stalin and Mao Zedong. They firmly believe that they see a better society taking shape, even though they know their views are wrong. Even journalists and intellectuals who were not completely blind to the regime's crimes found reasons to justify what was happening. Intellectuals around the world spoke with enthusiasm and praise for the system that was about to replace capitalism. Even if they fail, intellectuals will defend the system, trying to blame it on capitalist destroyers or resistance to oppression, foreign powers, or U.S. imperialism. Or they try to relativize these failures by talking about unrelated bad things that happened, such as natural disasters or climate change. It is generally acknowledged by those who call themselves socialists today that socialist experiments have failed in the past. But have they also learned the right lessons from these failures? Absolutely not. Socialists who criticize Stalinism and other forms of real-world historical socialism consistently fail to analyze the economic reasons for the failure of these systems. Their analysis attacks these systems as lacking democratic rights and freedoms, but the alternatives they propose are based on a vague vision of all-encompassing, equality, or fairness, country system. When contemporary socialists talk about a non-authoritarian, non-dictatorship, egalitarian, fair and humane socialism, they are not as original as they think. Socialist projects do not begin with totalitarian aspirations, they simply end with totalitarian aspirations. This is inevitable and no exception. Eventually it evolved into authoritarianism and dictatorship. In fact, in the 1970s and 1980s Sweden came dangerously close to democratic socialism. For Sweden, this was a period of relative economic decline, culminating in the crisis of the early 1990s. The model was abandoned for good reason. Sweden is now again a relatively free market economy, albeit one with a heavy tax burden. Nonetheless, the return of socialism as a mass movement was not the result of this semantic confusion. With the development of new technologies, especially artificial intelligence, more elites believe that socialism will work again. For them, socialism means the public ownership of the means of production, distribution, and exchange. Socialism means fairness or equality, plundering the middle class in exchange for their power. They don't care who has the ability to make society as a whole prosper. However, there is only one way for the people who can make society prosper, and that is to escape. Like California and Minnesota, companies and wealthy people fled the state. People will lose their jobs and fall into poverty. Poor people desperately seek government benefits. The government can then use these benefits to gain more votes from the poor. This should not be our future. We need to understand socialism because it has shaped our history and will shape our future. Socialist life is miserable and difficult. No one wants to go to socialism. I share with you what socialism is and why we should stop its disease from spreading in this beautiful land of the free. If you think this is something that has to be done, you have to make more and more people aware of this issue. Spread this awareness to more and more people. If you like this channel, please subscribe, share, and like it so that more people can hear this voice. Thanks.